A few months ago, I was scrolling through Disney Plus to find something to watch, as any other teenager would do. As I glided by my favorite childhood TV shows, such as Phineas and Ferb or Doc McStuffins, I paused at seeing the name Mira, featured in a relatively new children's show named Mira the Royal Detective. For once, I saw myself on TV. Growing up, it was always the side characters of a TV show who were Indian, never the main. My inner child gleamed at the fact that I could see myself, a strong and confident Indian girl as the main character in a show. I can only imagine how many hours I would have sat in front of the TV with my snacks, watching Mira solve all these mysteries. Seeing myself represented at the forefront in a positive light led me to think about how South Asians had been negatively portrayed in the past in the media and how racial discrimination and biases were inherently intertwined in forms of entertainment. My name is Samira Aurora, and I would love to share with you my analysis on South Asian representation in the American cinematic industry as an AAPI youth advocate. To understand the implications of misrepresentation of South Asians in Hollywood, I believe it is essential to look into the history of South Asians in Hollywood. The debut of a South Asian actor in Hollywood began with an Indian actor named Sabu. And for those of you thinking I'm on a first name basis with Sabu, his full name is Selar Sabu, but he was known as Sabu in the industry, so don't worry. Raised by the Maharaja of Mysore, Sabu made his debut in the movie Elephant Boy at the age of 12 in 1937. Sabu was the main character, portraying a young animal lover. Many critics, including the New York Times, said that the movie was decent for its time and produced a humorous story without leaning into stereotypes about Indians that we see today. In other words, Elephant Boy did not set the stereotypes about Indians in modern entertainment, although Sabu did act in films like The Thief of Baghdad, where he played a thief named Abu. In fact, Abu the Monkey from Aladdin was inspired by Sabu's character in the film, which in its own way speaks volumes about the perception of South Asians of the time. However, South Asians faced further misrepresentation in the 40s, with films like The Road to Singapore and Gunga Den, with white actors committing brownface to adding an accent that continued to be coined as the stereotypical Indian accent that you might hear today in TV. South Asian actors continued to be far and in-between, with a rise of Anglo-Indian female actresses making appearances in some films during the 60s. Yet, it was only in the early 80s where an Indian actor named Kavi Raz was featured in, as a side character in the series Street Elsewhere. Kavi Raz played a doctor who happened to be the laughingstock and only had a few lines. Furthermore, in the 90s, stereotypes of South Asians were immediately fortified. Indians became known for being technology professionals, and this change can be pinpointed to the 1988 movie Short Circuit 2, where a brown-faced actor portrays an Indian as an expert in technology, with a heavy accent. This stereotype continued in characters like Apu from The Simpsons or Babu Bhatt in the show Seinfeld, and thus opened a whole new facet of typecasting South Asians in Hollywood, the stereotypes of brown people. One of the stereotypes I see about India in TV shows and movies is that India is this overpopulated, dirty country. For instance, the movie Slumdog Millionaire depicts a boy who faced deep trauma from his impoverished childhood and his journey to winning a million dollars. This deep and moving movie is one of the few Indian-based films known in the Western world, and this brilliant movie poignantly captures the struggles of the main character throughout his life. However, because of the lack of more famous Indian-inspired movies, many people have the assumption that most, if not all of India, is a polluted and impoverished third world country. Thus, entertainment would paint Indian culture and tradition as a monolith, solely based on this popular Hollywood-backed movie. While I think there is still a considerable amount of work to be done in order to ensure equitable means for everyone in the country, I think it's time for the third world country stereotype to be broken. With bustling cities like Bangalore and Delhi, India has touches of modernity and opulence throughout the country. In addition, through the current representation in the media, the portrayal of South Asians has been boiled down to this certain look. Typically, this stereotype includes a North Indian or a South Indian person with glasses and a heavy accent. A sense of social awkwardness is also intertwined with the character, such as Rajesh from Big Bang Theory or Baljeet from Phineas and Ferb, where both of these characters are presented as nerds, for a back, lack of a better word. Yet, the region of South Asia is a diaspora that extends this look and persona. In fact, all of these people are also from the South Asia, in regions like Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Northeast India, such as Assam. 
Having a one-dimensional view depicted in entertainment representing only Indian people and labeling the whole movie and show as representative of all of South Asia is detrimental and remiss to encapsulating the beauty and diverse looks of the many countries that make up South Asia. Although there seems to be some brown representation within American entertainment, we must ask ourselves, at what point is the dignity of a community lost in order for more screen time? Is it better to be represented in an inaccurate way or have no representation at all? These questions have affected me since childhood, where I would watch many children's TV shows. Seeing how the Indian people on screen acted, especially at a young age, affected my perception of how I viewed the world. For instance, on the show Jesse, I always paid attention to how people treated Ravi, one of the characters who Jesse has to babysit. Often he was cast aside for being too nerdy or weird because of his pet lizard and thick accent. Seeing how the characters on this show would make fun of him, I often felt that perhaps I would be made fun of too for being too Indian. And after first moving from America to India, this was a big worry of mine. I remember this one scene in Jesse where Ravi is excited for school and decides to wear some traditional Indian clothes as a means to celebrate this occasion, a krita. Immediately, Jesse and Luke, another character, makes fun of Ravi and starts ridiculing him. As I grew up, I felt that others would judge me constantly and had a feeling that people would point out certain aspects of my heritage like they did to Ravi on Jesse. I was worried that my Indian culture would be made fun of too. In this way, I would begin to close up and wasn't my authentic self most of the time. This is why I feel accurate representation is crucial to have in Hollywood, especially in TV shows and movies made for a younger audience so that they can blossom into their own person. In the ever-evolving landscape of modern entertainment, though, I find myself increasingly relieved and proud to witness the substantial strides being made to represent South Asians in a multifaceted manner. For example, I was so glad to see a Pakistani girl to be featured as the main character and superhero in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, undoubtedly a giant in global entertainment. Kamala Khan, played by Iman Balani, is a spunky and fun teenager who keeps her city safe, but also she showcases her culture and heritage with pride in Miss Marvel. Another TV show with this range includes Never Have I Ever, which has received many awards and accolades for its nuanced depiction of an Indian family by showcasing a range of characters. I was also so glad to see the region of South India has been recognized on a global scale, with Hollywood movies like RRR and the Netflix documentary Elephant Whispers receiving Academy Awards at the Oscar. The recognition and awards received by these media pieces define the significance and di of a diverse storytelling in the film industry, and create an avenue for more inspiring narratives to emerge. Other television shows like Bridgerton with a mainly Eurocentric setting have featured South Asian actors in a positive and influential manner as well. As time continues, I look forward to seeing how the landscape of the entertainment industry evolves to showcase a variety of dimensional characters representing as many identities as possible so that one day future generations can sit in front of their TV and make memories with their families seeing themselves finally for once loved and appreciated for their identity on the big screen. Thank you.